think rather like Lord of the Rings, you know, this is there's obviously a natural progression to an end, and that means it will be a pinnacle of sorts. It will top what's come before. It's about building to this point. So, as far as the end of a story goes, it, I think it will be the greatest of the three films that we've seen so far. Two films that we've seen so far, and um, for obvious narrative reasons, you know, things come to a close and. I mean, just on a sort of emotional level for fans realizing they're not going to visit Middle Earth or Peter Jackson's version of it anytime soon, you know, it, that, this is it. And th that to me already sort of heightens the idea of what it's going to be as an experience as a film goer. Um, but I'm kind of in the dark, you know, I don't do all that much in this film, and there's a hell of a lot that is done in this film. So I'm going to be equally kind of surprised and fascinated when I, when I see it all. Directed some of it, though, so ask him. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that this, as, as Pete has said, uh, it, it's part of a conclusion for this trilogy. But nevertheless, it's meant to be, it was always designed to be part of six films. So there is a real natural rhythm and flow. So although uh, you know, Pelennor Fields, uh, you know, people are saying, oh, well, is, is the battle going to be bigger than Pelennor Fields? The battle in this is not just about combat. It's not just about the, the, the size and the scale of it. The battle is about the kind of the the, the emotional battle the, for all of the characters. It's, it, it represents so many other things. It's incredibly layered, and it's also about uh, you know the, the resolution of, of, of these sets of characters, but also some that then go on to Lord of the Rings. That, as I say, this was always intended to be uh, a huge, e epic watching session of, of, of six movies, and, and so it's 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 yeah, it's finding this, a subtle way for them to, to bridge. Andy, you're really the the face of motion capture at this point, um, and you know, could you reflect on just your journey starting out in this series, and then wh where you've come to now, and then also Benedict, his follow up question is, uh, wh what did you learn from Andy about motion capture while while filming these? Uh, I mean, the, the, I was very, I was lucky enough to walk into a situation where, uh, the, you know, that Peter. Uh, let me let me start again. Peter Jackson had an idea, which is which is a key idea, which is the real big transformational shift, which is that you don't have two actors in a scene imagining what a third character is doing. And really, that's the that's that was the basis of will you come and be part of this? Will you come and act? Will you come play the role of Gollum? The technology was like how it was a way of achieving achieving that to finally manifest a character on screen. And 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 what hap has happened is that is that through playing that character, it has opened up, I suppose. A, a realization it's a transformation from visual effect to character and that sort of character is emblematic of that I suppose um, and um, and so uh, so basically that yeah so it's been a huge journey of, 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 of evolution with the, with the technology yeah yeah I mean, I, you know I learned a great deal by watching Andy's work, not least when Pete showed me a little un unfinished clip of um, the riddle scene in, in uh, Unexpected Journey, and it was him as Gollum completely, and then it all faded away, and it was him in the suit, and then after about, you know, like three seconds, you forgot that it was Andy acting in the suit, you just saw nothing but Gollum, and that's a testament to two things. One is that, you know, it is the most phenomenally realized performance in the flesh. I mean, you know, it's, it's just everything that you see on, on, on the final finished Weta beautified project, or the beautified project that it is for Gollum, is all in the performance. And it all comes from that. So I thought, well, right. You, and then I realized, well, yeah, but I'm not playing a biped mammal. So I can't learn specifically from his work as Kong and Caesar and, uh, and Gollum. But to be free enough to go, right, well, this is actually a performance art form. I don't have to fear the technology. It's actually, it's, it's, I'm doing something that's going to aid the technology, hopefully, and vice versa. And I, it was incredibly freeing, I, far easier than any green screen acting I've ever done because you're not hitting a mark, you're not in costume, you're not in makeup, you're not pretending a golf ball is, is, a, is an entire universe or someone's personality. You, you, can, you can be completely free to imagine because you have nothing. And I didn't even have another actor because of the scale I had. So I, I, in a way, I did doubly easy, you know. Um, and I found that really freeing, really freeing. And you know, thanks to knowing what the end results could be like, I just pushed myself and pushed myself. Sadly, he wasn't there. That was the tragedy. We wish we'd sort of had that trade-off, but he just—he was on a little sabbatical because he'd been directing second unit as well as acting. So, uh, rightfully having a rest, and I was trying to squeeze it in because Khan just started in here, well, Irish in LA, and so I flew over literally for two weeks to, to do my motion capture work then. And. Um, I loved every minute of it. I'd do it again in a heartbeat and might well be doing it again in a heartbeat, which is cool. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitVix on Twitter or visit HitVix.com.